In the headlines, hepatitis B outbreak looms as Kano reports five cases in Karai local government. Police detained couple over death of a man in Ogun. Trade in fruits and vegetables shrink as prices rise. On the global scene, Israel to end bombardment of northern Gaza Strip. Well, hello there and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I'm Sakir Ibrahim. Thanks for joining us. Well, many thanks for joining us once again. Residents of Karai local government area of Kano State say they are at risk of an outbreak of hepatitis B, which is currently spreading in the area if nothing is done to swiftly address it. In this special report, Trust TV's correspondent Idris Jabrin reports that no fewer than five persons have been confirmed as positive cases of the disease in the local government. Here's this report. This is Karai town in Karai local government area of Kano State. It is also the headquarters of Karai Emirates, one of the four first-class emirates in Kano State. The people here are mostly House of Fulani Muslims. Many of them are farmers or herders, but they face the same old problems. Rising unemployment, poverty, and more recently the deadly challenge of Hepatitis B. Hepatitis B is part of a group of hepatitis viruses that attacks the liver. It is spread through the blood and bodily fluids and is commonly passed on by unprotected sex or from mother to child during birth and through contaminated noodles. Unfortunately, residents of Karai are recently turning out to be positive for hepatitis B infection. Honestly, as people are coming here every day for blood test, we used to have an increased confirmed cases of hepatitis B. And this is largely responsible because of there is no adequate awareness. People are not aware on how to conduct themselves. And this is caused by either unprotected cell sex and several other reasons that are responsible for hepatitis B. This is one of the few laboratories within Karai communities where no fewer than five people reportedly test positive daily. Virtually on a daily basis, if people come to this hospital and so long they are tested, we used to have about five to ten uh, positive cases. Ibrahim Ahmad was recently diagnosed with hepatitis B, but after a few weeks, he tested negative though not without some treatment. There was a time I went to Gorzo Hospital to donate blood for my brother. I was told that I have hepatitis B, and the doctor told me to keep on using sugar cane and uh, some other sugary kind of food. So when I came back home, I maintained that uh, advice I, w I constantly took sugar cane and other sugary things. And after some few months, I went back to the hospital. I was tested negative of this he uh, hepatitis B. This is Karai Specialist Hospital, where several people come for blood tests on daily basis. Although neither the hospital chief medical director nor any staff of this laboratory is allowed to speak to us, but residents see failure of government to provide necessary health care services is largely responsible for their current situation. Honestly, I learned that there are so many reasons responsible for this hepatitis B. But then we in the local areas, who cares about going to the hospital every now and then to test himself? In fact, you can see that we don't have enough of health care facilities. Government has virtually abandoned us. We don't have anything here to show up. So... When there is even no healthcare facilities, how do you expect people to go to the hospital uh, seeking to know their state? People here often treat and manage the ailments at home on account of lack of financial resources for treatment at the hospital. Attempt to speak to health authorities in Kano on the spread of the disease were not successful. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. And pregnant women in Lagos have lamented the rising cost of medication and antenatal care. The recent removal of fuel subsidy and foreign exchange unification by the government of President Bola Tinubu has skyrocketed inflation 
affecting prices of goods and services in the market. This coupled with the recent departure of leading pharmaceutical company GlaxoSmithKline, an FMCG brand Procter & Gamble, led to a hike in prices of drugs and some baby wear products. Some pregnant women who spoke with our correspondent are also lamenting the hike in prices of medications and other essential health care products. The crime the sad situation Dokas Okafo says getting pregnant these days requires financial planning as the rising cost of goods and services has also affected the prices of drugs, maternity items and the antenatal consultations fee. And the police command in Ogun says a couple, Mba Moses and Florence Moses, have allegedly killed one Mark Kalu after the victim sustained injuries from a fight between them. This is contained in a statement signed by the spokesperson of the command, SP Omololao Dutola, and made available to newsmen in Abeokuta on Saturday. Udutola explained that the divisional police officer in Odeta area of the state on Saturday at 7 a.m. received a report of the death of the 45-year-old man. The spokesperson said that the deceased sustained injuries during a fight that occurred on the, 18th, on the 8th of October 2023 at Osele Market. She says the altercation took place in the market square between the late Mark Kalu and a couple, Mba Moses, aged 50, and his wife, Florence, aged 40, leading to the death of Kalu. According to the police, efforts were initially made by the Babaloja of Osele and the Igbo community leader to mediate and find amicable resolutions, but these failed. The suspects have now been taken into custody for preliminary investigation into the matter. She explained that the body of the deceased had been deposited at the mortuary of the Federal Medical Center, Idiaba, for autopsy. And a truck driver and his conductor sustained serious injuries on Sunday morning when the truck fell off the bridge while on their way to Apapa. The truck driver and his conductor were on their way to deliver an empty container back to one of the terminals at the Lagos Port Complex when the unfortunate incident occurred. It was learned that the driver of the truck who was on top speed was struggling for right of way when it eventually rammed into the side of the bridge before rumbling down from the top of the bridge, an eyewitness said. Unfortunately, the truck did not land on anyone, fortunately rather, on anyone, and it landed on an empty space by the side of the bridge. Or the Director of Public Affairs and Enlightenment Department of Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, Mr. Adebayo Taufik, confirmed the incident. Taufik said the yet-to-be-identified driver and his conductor were rescued by officials of LASMA and policemen who were on traffic duty at the time of the incident. He said the incident involved an articulated truck that was carrying a 40-feet container. According to him, the truck fell off from the top of the bridge in water papa and that both the driver and his conductor were seriously injured. Tofik said the injured driver was rescued by LASMA personnel in a pool of blood gushing out from his head while the motorboy sustained a serious waist fracture by his spinal cord. An Honorable Dr. Aminu Ibrahim Malay has won the All Progressives Congress APC by-election ticket for the Jalingo Yorozing constituency in a primary election which held at the gymnasium hall of the Joli Yame Stadium, Jalingo. Malay, who defeated other aspirants at the poll, promised to work together with the losers for the victory of the party in the forthcoming by-elections. Trust TV correspondent reports. The premises of Gym Hall in Joli Nyame Stadium was agog with security operatives, party agents, and the supporters of aspirants who contested for the by election into the House of Representatives seat for Jalingo Yoro Zinc Federal Constituency were at hand to cheer their candidates to victory. The by election followed the demise of the 2023 winner of the seat. Honorable Ismaila Yusha Umayhanchi, who died shortly before the swearing in. Recalled the electoral body, INEC has set aside 3rd of February for the by election. Aminu Ibrahim Malle, who has at one time represented the constituency in 7th and 8th Assembly, a March winner with 41 votes. This time, since 19, uh, 2019, this is the first time APC conduct a free and fair primaries. 
and we're happy with it. We're very, very much uh, happy. And then that the person that has already defeated us wasn't here. And all of us, we had a chat on phone and we have congratulated him and we are ready to team up behind him and work diligently to ensure that the APC wins the general election. Aminu Ibrahim Malle, who expressed happiness over the election outcome, also thanked the other contestants for their maturity, promising to join hands with them and work for the victory of the party at the by-election. We were able to get free, fair, credible, and well-nurtured primary election for the first time. And these developments came up as a result of the caliber, the caliber of personnel the national headquarters sent to us to come and conduct the election. There are people of caliber, well respected, highly reserved, with a very strong zeal and enthusiasm to ensure that APC has been pushed to next level. The election was conducted peacefully, devoid of any rancor or violence. And the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Nyasom Wiki, has boasted that when it is time for politics, everyone will know who is in charge of the politics in River State. Wiki said this while reconciling with the South South Chairman of the All Progressives Congress. Victor Gyadom, who hosted him at his country home in Gokana local government area of River State. According to Wike, Gyadom mobilized his people to show he was still politically relevant, noting that politics was about making an impact on the people. Despite the increasing popularity on social media platforms, the FCT minister said he is not swayed by comments on digital platforms, instead called on politicians to work for the people. The former governor of River State also reiterated his stance on the 2023 presidential election, insisting he does not regret working against his party, the People's Democratic Party, and backing President Bola Tinubu of the APC during the 2023 presidential election. Wike has been at loggerheads with his successor, Governor Sim Fubara. While President Bola Tinubu has waded into the political impasse between the two parties, Wike says he believes with time, residents of the state will know the real political giant. It is good to make an impact in the life of people. Forget about these hungry noisemakers on the road. When the time comes, we'll know who is in charge or who is not in charge. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. There's a time for everything. That is time to plant. That is time to harvest. We have no time for politics. There's no time for anybody to say, and for this and for that. We have no reached that time. When the time will reach, we will know who is there, who. If he didn't dare, he didn't dare. Minister of FCT there, Yesum Wiki. Moving on, Quadom Market provides hundreds of people with opportunities to earn a living. Although inflation and pet petrol price hike have recently slowed down activities in the market, the renowned vegetable and fruit sellers are now looking for ways to sustain the businesses. Hassan Lawan Kuli reports. Every morning, farmers take their commodities to Quadom Market in the multi a local government area of Gombe State. The booths are later distributed within Gombe and neighboring states. Fruit and vegetable sellers here run at loss due to the high cost of transportation. Thousands of people depend on this market to earn a living, but for now they are at risk of losing their jobs because we are receiving only one third of the vegetables we usually transport here. It is largely due to the low yield at the periodos harvest season. 
and the cost of transporting the products to this market. Price of vegetables is skyrocketing. We earn less or not in some times, but for today, it is somehow stable. The Moringa we bought previously at 3,000 Naira is now 2,000 to 2,500 Naira, but still not cheaper compared to last year's price. This inflation was the worst I have ever seen. We are buying 100 kg bag of onions at the rate of 97,000 Naira and transportation cost 10,000 Naira. Therefore, it must be sold at 125,000 or 130,000. And all these were due to an increase in the petroleum price. Sellers are strategically adjusting the price of the commodities to minimize losses and sustain their businesses. Hasala Onkoli. Trust TV News, Gwambi. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Coming up. Are tribal marks disfiguring or for beauty identity? Well, of course, this and more stories after the break. Stay with us. Many thanks for staying with us on the news update. Here's a recap of the headlines. Hepatitis B outbreak looms as Kano reports five cases in Karai local government. And police detain couple over death of a man in Ogun state. Moving on to other stories now. There are growing concerns over increase in the rate of abandonment of family responsibility by some men in the society, which pushes vulnerable homes into untold hardship. Our stakeholders attributed the challenge to lack of commitment on the part of the heads of the families, which also amounts to abuse of the rights of the victims. Trust TV's Hamid Oyibadi reports. The recent trend in which some men are running away from their families to evade financial obligations calls for concern. Why some men run away from their homes because they cannot afford to cater for their families? Some evade their responsibilities due to joblessness or outright laziness. These has forced many women to go extra miles to engage in difficult trades to make money so as to cater for their children. Nowadays, when you see women taking charge of responsibilities in the family, well, um, it's, it doesn't seem to be how it should be. Because um, men are supposed to be breadwinners of their families. When you establish a family, you should be competent to be able to take care of your family. Abandoning your responsibilities for a woman is, is, is out of place. Traditionally in Africa, it's not like that. Our forefathers used to take care of their women, take care of their children. Unfortunately, our women are in competition with our men. They compete with their husband in order to, you know, uh, make the home front stable. So if a man allows if a man allows a woman to contribute to the home front, then the at a point it, a point a point will be reached where the woman will now take the sole responsibility, thereby making the man irresponsible. Speaking on this growing habit in the society. The chief imam of Ifeludun Community Central Mosque in Loshobo, Abdul Wahid Bamigbade, said the economic situation in the country could also be blamed for this inhumane behavior. We are not the same. Men are not the same. Husbands, we may have we have some husbands who are fully responsible. We have some who are struggling, but all of this, and we have some who are not willing to be responsible. In all of this. The, the, the economic situation in the country is really, really affecting almost everyone, except those who are very rich. The respondents emphasized the need for men to work harder, make legitimate income and cater for their families, as encapsulated in the scriptures. Amid Oyebade, Trust TV News, Oshobo. 
Oh, thanks, Amit, for that story. Moving on now. Tribal marks have traditionally been seen as a way of authenticating one's identity as a member of a particular tribe in the African continent. The facial marks are carved in different patterns and styles peculiar to a tribe. They are also considered a symbol of beauty and a rite of passage in some communities. However, the tradition is almost obsolete in many communities. Hassan Lawal Kuli reports. Tribal marks are permanent facial or body marks that have been part of various African cultures, including Nigeria. The practice has spanned for generations. These marks are often unique to specific ethnic groups and are believed to represent tribal identity, beauty, and social status. <laughs> Tribal marks are sanctuary as traditions. It is a way of recognizing the tribe, clans, and family members without even asking a person which tribe he belongs to. It is quite unfortunate that globalization, together with modern child care systems, treats these ancient traditions. In recent years, the practice of tribal marks have faced increasing scrutiny. Many argue that it infringes on individuals' right to make choices about their own bodies, while others point out that it can have physical and emotional consequences for those who bear these marks. Having a tribal marks to my own understanding can even that's why it used to lead us to tribalism and ethnic crisis because it's true maybe I can be able to have a relationship with you not knowing that you are from so 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 tribe but as far as I saw you with a tribal marks I can it's easily for me to identify that you are not from my tribe so I will start grooming something like ethnocentrism that yes my ethnic group is more superior than you we have tribal marks but we cannot let our younger ones or our children to have it it is all tradition that need to be abandoned while they continue to hold cultural significance for money they are raise a growing recognition of the need to protect individuals' right and well-being. Many African countries have taken steps to discourage the practice of tribal marks. Hassan Lawankoli, Trust TV News, Gwambe. Well, quite an interesting report there from Hassan. And to the international scene now, Israel has signaled that it is ready to end its bombardment of northern Gaza, saying it has dismantled Hamas in the part of the Gaza Strip. The claim from the military spokesperson that Israel had nullified the Palestinian armed group in the north of the enclave extends the signs that it plans to shift to a more precise campaign. This is coming as top American and European envoys toward the region on Sunday, stepping up the international pressure over the mountain death toll and humanitarian crisis in Gaza. And that wraps up the news update at this hour. Do well to follow us across all of our social platforms and also join our live stream on YouTube for more news, programs and documentaries. I'm Sagir Ibrahim. Join us again.